Hey everybody, Carl Schuh from Snorkel.tv here, and today I just want to discuss with you and show you how to build a little effect that you'll probably see all over the place. Um, and it's this nice little grayscale to color effect that's happening on rollover. Uh, you'll also notice that there is a little bit of a glow around these people as I roll over them. Um, and it's just a nice little stylish touch. And instead of explaining one particular feature of Tween Max today or some nifty little doodad, um, this is more of a review. Um, nothing that I'm going to be talking about is entirely new. I'm just going to show you how to combine the things that we've been talking about for the last few weeks and uh, make something fairly cool. Honestly, most of you should be able to do this on your own by now if you had been paying attention. Fortunately, some of you have not, so we are going to go through this step by step. Um, again, when I roll over somebody, they get all bright, and we roll off, and they go all grayscale. All right, so I'm going to go pretty quick through this, all right, and uh, let's start it out. Um, one more thing to note, another little effect here, is when this movie does load, notice how they all start bright, and then they progressively fade out. And I was rolling over my buddy Sawyer here. All right, well, anyway, let's do this. Let's go to my start file. And I want to show you just how the file is built. On the stage, I have something here called NavMC. It's one movie clip that includes Miles, Hurley, and Sawyer there. Um, if you don't know those people, you may be a little lost. Moving forward. If I look inside of this movie clip here, you'll see that we have a movie clip called Miles MC, Hurley MC, and Sawyer MC. Okay, so these guys are all single framed movie clips. By that, I mean if I just double click on Sawyer here, you'll see that all he is is a broken apart bitmap uh, because we want to get that transparency around him. Let's go back to scene one. And we're going to look in my actions layer here. And you'll see that I have some basic generic code here, all right? I don't want to be sitting here typing slowly in front of you, making errors. So we have our basic import statements to get GreenSock all hooked up. Also, we have the NavMC acting as a button, meaning that we will get the pointing finger cursor. Um, the next thing I'm doing is just setting up the basic event listeners for mouse over and mouse out. Now we're using mouse over and mouse out because we are going to be using the events current target property to target each movie clip individually. Um, please watch my video on target versus current target and uh, we'll talk about this a little bit more. Uh, but basically I don't have to tell Hurley and Miles and Sawyer each to have their own unique um, over and out listeners. We can put them all on the nav and then each movie clip can respond individually. All right, so just so you can see this in action, I'm just gonna do a quick trace here. And I'm gonna say trace E, which is the mouse event that's coming into this function, dot current target dot name. All right, I'm gonna test my movie out and let's bring up the output panel. All right, and look what happens when I roll over Sawyer. It says NavMC. When I roll over Hurley, it says NavMC. Miles, it says NavMC. The current target is the movie clip that has the event listener applied to it, meaning that in my actions, NavMC is the guy with the event listener applied to it. If I change this e.target, this is the actual element that is firing off the mouse over event. Again, I have a tutorial on this where we base a whole project on this concept and talk a lot about it. But let's just do this quick change, e.target.name, and now it knows that that's Miles, it knows it's Hurley, and Sawyer. Again, pay attention to my output. Let's clear it. Let's go back to my Swift. And again, Miles, boom. Hurley, Sawyer. All right, so we only need to put our event listeners on the nav, but each time we roll over a person, we can detect it. We're also then going to say var 
current MC because we want to be able to um, refer to this movie clip inside of our tween max instances is going to be a movie clip and it's going to be our e dot target cast as a movie clip so again we talk about these concepts in other tutorials let's get to the fun stuff and the fun stuff is always tween max all right that wasn't a trick question let's go to our plugin explorer and we're going to be doing two different kinds of effects here we're going to be doing first a color matrix filter and we're going to be using this filter basically for desaturation purposes um, I have the settings of 0.5 and 0.1 in here and let's just do a tween and you'll see now that this um, movie clip here gets very very unbright and unsaturated how's that now it looks nearly grayscale and it's very dark I might even bring the brightness down a little bit too. And so there we have something that's, you know, very dark. And then when we roll over, it's going to come back to full color. Now, all of the settings that I need are inside of this one line of code. Um, we have a great tutorial on using the plugin explorer. This should not be new to you at all. We're also going to be talking about the glow filter. And we're going to be using an example um, with settings like this yellow with a blur of 10 and just do a quick tween and that's sort of what we're going for. What's great about the Plugin Explorer is that you can use it just to get sort of um, a base reference sort of of the names of the properties you're going to tweak and once you get into Flash you can still t change all the values however you like. It just saves you from making any typos with the property names and the syntax. So I've got this stuff all worked out in another file and I'm just going to uh, do a little copy job of both of the tween max codes that I'll need. And so let's just paste right here. And here we're saying we're doing one tween max two, and we're telling current MC, which is whatever movie clip inside of the nav that we just rolled over, to take 0.3 seconds to apply the color matrix filter. And we're going to bring the saturation up to one and the brightness up to one. Now we haven't yet desaturated anything, so let's just show you how this would work. Let's just put a zero in here real quick. And you'll see now that when I roll over people, they turn grayscale right away. I know some of you people out there, you're doing this the old way. You're bringing in a colored picture from Photoshop and a black and white picture from Photoshop and you're cross-fading them, or you have one in up frame of a button or one in a down frame of a button, and you're just making my blood... Ugh. But that's okay. That's why we're here. We're here to learn the easy ways. So again, what I just did was made it sort of backwards of what I really want. Roll over, and you'll just see that they go grayscale. Cool. And I didn't really do anything all that crazy. So let's just turn that zero up to a one because really things are going to be getting reset when I roll over each person. And when I roll out is when we're going to be removing the color and all of that. Let's go back to here, actions frame, and on person out, here we have our color matrix filter bringing the saturation down and the brightness down and also removing the alpha of our glow filter. Now we didn't see the glow filter on over previously, I'm sorry about this, because once we desaturated the image, um, the glow filter pretty much got desaturated when it was along for the ride. So let's just test this out. Roll over, aha, but when we roll off, there we go. Now the trick here would be for all of these guys to start grayed out so that when I rolled over them for the first time we saw more of a drastic, see more of a drastic change. But now once they're all gray, boom, they light up, light up, and light up. So as I said before, it's kind of lame that when we start out they're all full color and then when I roll over them, okay that glow is kind of cool, but it's much more drastic and better when we start dark and then get brighter. So now we're going to just wrap up with another concept that we've talked about before, and that is telling all the clips to sort of stagger an animation. 
and instead of doing this line by line, I do copy and paste to the rescue. So here we go. We're going to set up an array that's going to contain the names of all three movie clips and the locations. Inside of NavMC, we have Sawyer MC. And we're going to use a tween max all two method, which allows us to tell multiple clips, even thousands of them, that they're going to be animating either all at once or staggered a little bit. So here we're going to tell all the clips inside the dudes array that their animation will take one second and we're going to apply a color matrix filter which will set their saturation to be very low, 0.1, and their brightness to 0.5. This last parameter here is the amount of delay in between each animation. Let's set that to two seconds. So now you'll see that Miles fades out, then Hurley, then Sawyer. All right. I would like that number, that delay to be a little bit lower, so it looks cooler. So we'll just do a 0.2. And for the entire animation, let's do this. Let's also put a delay of one second. So we get to see them all bright, and then after one second, Miles will start. 0.2 seconds later. Early will start, 0.2 seconds later, Sawyer will start. So here we have our one, then all of them. Now, it looks like that 0.2 was a little bit too quick there. So we'll get this right. It's very late. So let's do a one second here also. All right, Miles, Hurley, and then Sawyer. So you can play around with the numbers. That's the beauty of it. So now that they're all darkened out, now, the first time I roll over Sawyer, he lights up. So it is Hurley. Why so upset? And Miles. All right. So there we have a nice little fun desaturate and glow effect going on here, or resaturate effect as well. And the way we built this, I could literally have a hundred different characters inside of this one movie clip and they would all have the same effect apply. Now if you're having a little bit of trouble with the whole current target versus target thing that we did by putting the event listeners on the nav MC, you know just as a contrast I did make this once using an old-fashioned method. So here's an older file and you'll see that here I'm telling Miles to set its button, his button mode to true, and Hurley, and Sawyer, and Miles has a rollover, and Hurley has a rollover, and Sawyer has a rollover, and Miles has a roll out. I'm running out of steam here. So instead of doing all of this, I'm trying to make your life better and showing you to do it this way here. Okay, we can dense like nine lines of code into three. All right, folks, I'm going to wrap it up. Enjoy and uh, hit me with some comments if you have any questions. Talk to you soon.